right. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Um, All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so my name is Brandy Black and thank you guys for popping on. Um, I had just noticed um, that there had been lots of questions about brokerages and everyone as they're kind of getting closer and closer to um, you know, taking and passing their state exam, there was just more questions about what brokerage do I choose and what should I be looking for? And so I thought because this is sort of my area of expertise um, that I would kind of um, just share some information that I found um, and and things that, you know, I think would be important to want to know as you're sort of moving into the next phase and getting your real estate business started. Um, just for complete transparency, I am the assistant team leader at Keller Williams Realty Partners in Woodstock, Georgia. Um, but I am going to keep this completely non-Keller Williams and just really give you this information that you can kind of use as you move through the process. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Also, yep. I just want to remember that this is more of a conversation than a presentation. And I'll also send all this to you. I'll send you a link to this when we're done. So feel free as I'm going through it, if there's something that you're like, okay, you know, um, that that made me think of a question, or can you, you know, pause for a second and explain that to me a little more, feel free to pop in. Um, I do the presentation just because it gives me um, just some accountability and direction about what I'm going to talk about. Um, but, you know, if there's a minute where you're like, okay, you know, that made me think of something or can you explain that? Feel free to do that. Okay. Um, and then I will get your emails before we get off today and I will get this to you guys. Okay. Um, I can either send it to you in Facebook messenger or via email so that you can kind of go back through it and share it if you so choose. All right. Sounds good. So thank you. The first thing I really like talking about when um, I'm talking about um, choosing a brokerage is really just the evolution of the real estate industry as a whole. Um, I believe knowledge is power. And so really understanding the industry um, from an agent perspective. So you guys have probably experienced it from a consumer or a client perspective um, and not really from an agent perspective. And so understanding just the differences, um, I think really gives you the power to be able to make an educated decision. Um, so currently there are three different models of brokerages. And I'm going to preface this by saying that there's no good model, there's no right model, there's no bad model, and there's no wrong model, okay? A, a lot of it in, is really just going to depend on what you're wanting to accomplish through real estate, okay? Um, so I'm going to kind of break down the three models and then um, just, you know, kind of give you some information and some um some tidbits so that you can kind of identify as you're moving through the process and interviewing brokerages, you'll be able to quickly say, okay, you know, I see where that falls in. So the first model we're going to talk about is the um, dependent model. And that's what we call the traditional model of real estate. Um, those are going to be companies um, like Century 21, Caldwell Banker, Harry Norman, Berkshire Hathaway. Those are the companies that have been around in real estate forever. And we call those a dependent model of real estate. In that model, agents are dependent on the company. Financial gain is directed primarily to the broker and the company, and agents have fewer opportunities for accumulating wealth. So when, um, when you're, you know, interviewing with a dependent brokerage, um, if you partner with that brokerage, it's really the same as getting a job. OK, um, it's going to be kind of like um, getting a job at FedEx or Home Depot or, you know, the post office. Everything that you do will be to benefit that company. OK, not your own business. And so I think that's key to understand. Now, one of the things that you'll often hear if you're um, if you're interviewing with a dependent brokerage, because most of people aren't going to be like, hi, I'm X, Y, Z and I'm de and we're dependent. Right. They're going to say things that will help you kind of say, okay, I understand what, what model this is. And those are going to be things like we provide leads, okay? So if you're interviewing with a brokerage and they say, oh, we provide leads, that is an indicator that they are a dependent model. Now, 
I'm also going to say that leads are what makes the real estate world go round. So it's not a bad thing, right? Um, but just understanding what that means in the scheme of things, I think, um, will again, give you the power to make the right decision. So if a brokerage is providing leads to you, those leads belong to that company, okay? Meaning that they're generating the lead, they're handing it off to you as the sales agent, and then your job is to finish it, right? Contract to close. At the end of the day, if you decide, hey, you know what? I've had a 30-year career in real estate and I'm ready to hang up my high heels and or my suit and tie and I want to ride off into the sunset, or you decide, you know what, this model or this brokerage isn't meeting my needs and I think I want to make a move, you do not get to take that client list with you, okay? That client list belongs to that company and you cannot monetize it, all right? So at, a, at the end of a lucrative career, right, and you've built, you know, thousands of names of people that you've served, you can actually sell that, okay? We call that the golden handoff. You can actually monetize a, a real estate business and sell it off to another agent or a team or, or a brokerage. Um, if you partner with a dependent model, you don't have that opportunity because everything that you build while you're there belongs to them, okay? So you're, that's why it's saying that you're building their business. Financial gain is directed to the broker and the company, okay? The positives of that is that leads do make the real estate world go round. And some people don't like the idea of having to, what we call smile and dial and generate their own leads. Um, if that's something that you're like, listen, I, I, I don't want to be part of that. I want to be handed leads. I, I'd rather have someone who's going to just provide that to me. And I'm completely okay with knowing that I'm not building a business, then a dependent model is a good option for you. Okay. Again, no right, no wrong, just kind of is what it is. The opposite of that model is all the way over to um, the right, and that is what we call the independent model, okay? So those are going to be companies like um, Maximum One, Realty One, um, Fathom, EXP, um, and any other small brokerage, okay? So if you're thinking, you know, there's a great little brokerage in your hometown, um, very boutique-ish, typically that's gonna be what we would say is, a, is an independent model. So in that model, agents are independent and they have more of a landlord-tenant relationship. Agents have a focused environment with limited high-level support. And agents assume all of their own financial, legal, and management responsibilities. So when I'm talking about an independent model, I call it an a la carte model, okay? Because it sounds cheaper, right? So typically what the, the, the indicator will be that it's an independent model is that they only charge a transaction fee or they charge a low split, Okay, so 5%, 10%, um, you know, 20%, those would be what we would consider an independent model. All right. So that would be the indicator that it's an independent model. I call it an a la carte model because yes, there is a smaller fee on the transaction side, but then typically they're going to make up for that in either other fees that you pay to them for additional services or other fees that you have to pay to someone else and you've just got to figure it out and find it, right? So examples of that would be, okay, I've gone through real estate school, but I basically know how not to go to jail and the real estate. And maybe I can talk the lingo, but like I have zero idea how I'm going to build a real estate business, right? I don't know what I need to do. Okay, you've got to figure that out and pay for it, right? If someone's going to pour into you and train you and teach you how to build a business, that would typically not be included in an independent model. It would be an additional service or an a la carte service that you would either pay for inside the brokerage or would have to search and find that outside of the brokerage, okay? Other things would be like technology, right? This is a technology industry. Um, how, you know, what am I going to use to make sure that I know who my clients are and how am I going to text them and email them and, you know, where am I? going to design all my, my open house flyers, okay? Those would be services that you would either have to pay additionally for inside of your market center, 
or you would have to find and pay for outside of your market center. So I always liken it. I don't know where you guys live, but in, in Georgia, we have Ruth Chris Steakhouse and you think, OK, you know, I'm just going to get the steak. And then you go and you get the steak and it's $25 and the broccoli is $18 and the side salad's $14 and the cheesecake's $22. And before you know it, you spent way more than if you've just gone to Longhorns, right? <laughs> um, and so that's kind of what I think about when I think about an independent model. Not a bad model, right? It just depends on how much resources you need to grow a business. As a new agent, my personal opinion would be an independent brokerage is a very difficult model to build a real estate business in as a new agent because you don't know what you don't know and having to figure that out and, and you know learn it would be a little overwhelming. An interesting okay. thing about real estate is, is that there's a thousand things you can do to build a great real estate business, but there's only a few things that you need to focus on. And so having models and systems um, and, a, and a pathway is, is key, especially in the beginning. So um, that would be my personal thing about an independent. They're more geared towards seasoned agents or agents who don't need a lot of support or are very resourceful and, and kind of blazing their own trail. Okay. All right. So the middle model, um, and that's actually the model that my brokerage represents, is what we call the interdependent model. And Keller Williams is really the only brokerage that um, that has that model. Um, but basically, that model is associates or agents have an interdependent relationship with a company, mutual interest for success. Agents and brokers work as teams in achieving financial goals, and agents do not assume financial, legal, or management responsibilities. So we're sort of the best of both models. Okay. So what we've done is we've said, okay, what if we took a little from column A and a little from column B and we kind of put it together. And what if we said, Hey, we're just going to go in business with you. We're going to partner with you. We're going to let you go build your, your own independent business by having your brand, promoting yourself. Um, we're also going to offer some dependent resources like training and coaching and leads. Um, and we're just going to kind of combine it all. And we're going to call it an interdependent. So it's a little from column A, a little from column B. We're really the only company that kind of falls in the middle, okay? So every brokerage that you interview, you should be able to kind of quickly identify, okay, this is the, the model that they fall in. Um, and so you should be able to match it up as to what you're wanting to accomplish in real estate, okay? Does that make sense? Yes. You guys yeah. have any questions about that? I, I have one real quick question. Um, okay. So I'm a um, stay-at-home mom with three kids. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a registered nurse turned stay-at-home mom with three kids. Okay. Uh, looking for something that I could do. So I, I'm willing to work full-time hours, but I need to not have to be in an office per se full-time. So right. with, with the brokerages, so my kids are pretty self, they can take care of themselves except for the baby, but I just don't have the movement. Right. Um, ability except for like a Saturday or a Sunday when my husband's home right um so I don't really know like I I had a little inter interview with EXP they of course played that side of it which was hey you could work from home right but now that I'm hearing kind of the details about this um I'm a, I'll be a new agent I'll be brand new to this I, right. I know how to save you from a heart attack and steal your wounds but I have no idea <laughs> how to do any of this stuff um so that's interesting. So quick, and I'll ask you afterwards, but uh, I wonder if Keller Williams does have a something that's flexible enough to be financially uh, good for my family, but also flexible. Yeah. So basically you're a 1099 employee, right? So you're a 1099 employee. There are no requirements, only expectations. Um, and I'll say that most brokerages, um, are, are going to have, um, an online, flair to it, right? An online option. So there, are, you know, every single brokerage, whether they're a brick and mortar or not, is going to have an ability for you to train and educate and learn um, without having to be in an office. Um, we don't require you to be in the office. You're an independent broker. I mean, independent agent, you can kind of, you know, choose your own hours. Um, so, you know, I would say that, um, that, you know, 
A dependent model for you, I think it's going to have a lot more expectations than an interdependent or an independent, um, because right. you're not going to be able to, if you get a lead from the corporate office and they need to show a house this afternoon and that doesn't work for you, you may not have the flexibility to be able to, um, to, to you know, say, I don't want to do that, right? Or that doesn't fit into my yeah, schedule or I'm not willing to drive 45 minutes, right? Whereas if you're an interdependent or an independent, you do control your entire business. It is yours. You get to decide what you're going to do, where you're going to go, what your service area is going to be and what your availability is. Okay. okay. Thank you. That's, that's good info. Okay. Awesome. Any other questions about this? All right. And again, I'm going to send all this to you. So the four things, if I were you guys, that I would want to know about, right, um, are what we call the pillars of value. Um, and each brokerage is going to offer, you know, um, these pillars and really kind of figuring out what their focus and commitment is in each of these pillars is going to be key. Now, you're going to be able to prioritize these based on what's important for you, okay? Um, and so I would take these pillars and I would really prioritize them in a one, two, three, four kind of basis. Um, but the pillars are going to be culture training, technology, and wealth building, okay? So for some agents, training is their number one thing. Like, listen, I want to be the smartest agent. I want to know all the things. I want to make sure that my brokerage is going to provide me with not only training as a new agent, but training throughout my entire career. I want to be professionally educated. I want to be personally educated, right? So if training is a number one value for you, then, you know, being able to prioritize these are going to help you identify what is the best match for you. Maybe you're technology-based and you, you know, you love the idea of running a technology-based real estate business. Maybe that's number one for you, right? Right? So that would help you decide, okay, tell me about your technology. Tell me what kind of online training you have. Tell me what kind of resources that your brokerage provides for technology. Maybe it's culture, right? For us at Keller Williams, culture is our number one value. So maybe you're wanting to belong to something. Maybe you're wanting camaraderie. Maybe you're wanting collaboration. You know, maybe you're looking for someone who is community strong. You know, how do you pour back into your community? How do you support, you know, the, the um, you know, husbands and wives and men and women that you help, you know, um, buy homes? You know, maybe it's wealth building. Maybe you're thinking, you know what, I want to sell real estate, um, but I would love to build wealth inside of real estate. How do you help your agents build wealth? Right. What do you do to, so that they don't have to, you know, sit at a closing table when they're 85? Um, and, and, you know, like, how do you help your agents build wealth inside of real estate? So what I would say is take these four values and then prioritize them based on what's important to you. And as you go in and start interviewing brokerages, you'll be able to identify, you know, how it matches up to the priorities that you've set for yourself and your business. Um, and these were, these are the four values that, you know, the pillars of value that I feel like every, you know, they should all have some of these or, or really, in my opinion, all of these, um, but being able to match it up to say, okay, this is important to me as an agent, how is this rank on your value proposition as well? Okay, so those would be the things that I would wanna ask questions about. So I am gonna give you some top questions that you should ask as you're interviewing brokerages, okay? Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, so the first one is, what training do you currently have for producing agents? OK, um, most companies are going to have they're going to offer training of some sort. Right. Um, especially for new agents, because they do understand that new agents need training. But what happens when you are you make it to the point that you're a top producing agent in their market center? What you know, how are they going to continue to help you raise your lid, raise your oh, ceiling? Okay. Right. Um, so that there is not, you know, the last thing you would want is to go into a brokerage and their top producing agent sells $10 million a year. As a new agent, that sounds amazing. But in the scheme of real estate, you may say, you know what, I want to sell $20 million in real estate. How are you going to help me get there? Right. What training and resources do you have after I've learned the ins and outs of the business to continue to help me grow in the industry? I would also want to know, OK, how are you going to help me grow personally? 
right? With what we know to be true is, is that when you are physically fit, mentally fit, emotionally fit, your business will be strong. So how are they going to pour in to grow you as a person so that you can grow a business? Because it's not just about helping people buy, sell, and invest in real estate. It's about who you become in the process. Okay. So I would want to know, how do you help producing agents and what is your top producing agent in your market center? Next question is, what is your strategy to compete with disruptors in the industry? Okay, so disruptors means things like COVID, Zillow, Open Door, right? There's been some disruptors that have come into the industry that have sort of shook it up, okay? So who is their visionary? And what strategies do they have to help compete with the disruptors? You, as an agent, your focus has to always remain on your clients. And you need a brokerage that's going to be visioning ahead of you um, so that they're blazing the trail and you're following the footsteps. It's going to take every single bit of time and energy you have to love on your clients. And that's where your focus needs to be to be able to serve your clients well. So how are they going to vision for you through the industry? blazing a trail so that you aren't having to think about, oh my God, what if, you know, XYZ comes in and shakes up the industry? What am I going to do? You want to partner with a company that is 13 steps ahead of you <laughs> and what is their vision and who is their visionary um, and how, what is their strategy to be able to compete with those dis disruptors? Okay. okay. I didn't even think about that actually. That's why I'm here. See, oh, I'm here to help you think about the things that you, that, you know, you just, Gosh, you, you guys are in the thick of trying to accomplish the hardest test in the history of tests. So um, that's why you, that, that's what I'm here for. All right. The third question is, how will you coach me beyond your biggest producers? And we talked about that a little bit, right? Who is the biggest producer in their office? And is that someone that you can follow in their footsteps? We always say kind of what is your lid, right? Um, because as a new agent, um, there's a little bit of background noise, so I'm going to mute. But as a new agent, you might not can think past 2 million in production, 5 million in production, 10 million in production. But I promise you with good systems, tools, and resources, you will quickly get there. So you want to know how will you help me reach my goals beyond the, the biggest producers in the office, okay? Okay. Um, so that would be a question that you would want to know. Who is your biggest producer and how are you going to coach me beyond that? Fourth question is, will I ever be able to keep 100% of my commission? Okay. So the different models of real estate have different compensation plans. Typically a dependent model, the very first one we talked about, those traditional models, they are never going to be 100%, okay? Um, you're gonna pay them for every transaction forever, okay? Um, independent model, of course, we talked about that's a cheaper per transaction fee, um, but typically may or may not have what we call a cap. OK, and a cap is the most you would pay them in any year. So you want to know, is there ever an opportunity to keep 100 percent of my commission? Now, I'm going to tell you that if you're coming into the industry and you want to be a, a, you know, sell a few houses a year, help your friends and family, you know, maybe do, you know, sell less than 10 homes a year. This may not be a question that's important to you. OK, this question is important to you if you want to sell real estate at a high level. Okay. Yeah, I want to retire my husband. Huh? So I want to retire my husband. OK, so, so those are that requires goal. big goals. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so this would be an important, an important question for you. All right. You yeah. have a question online. Um, oh, you can't hear me anymore. Let's see. Uh oh. Let's see if she and I can get back on the same page. Can you hear me now, Terry? I think she might be frozen. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, this would be something that you would want to, you, you know, you would want to know, right? Is there a time where I'm going to keep 100% of my commission? Again, this is for that producer who wants to really sell real estate, right? You want to do 10, 12, 20, right? You want to sell real estate and you want to be able to budget, um, Okay, you want to be able to budget um, how much your cost of sale is going to be, right? So a capping company is going to be able to give you that, right? So the most you're going to pay us in any year is X, Y, Z, right? So understanding if they have a cap, um, because that helps you be able to budget. You know what, if I sell 50 homes this year, the most I'm going to pay that brokerage is $18,000, Okay, so um, you want to know, are, are they a capping company? A capping company is going to say, yes, you will, once you cap, keep 100% of your commission. And I'll tell you here in Woodstock, Georgia, it takes about five transactions to cap here. So after you've done your five transactions, the rest of your transactions for the rest of your year, you're 100% commissioned. So you're that able that's to yearly, budget that. hmm? that's, a, that's a yearly cap then? That's a yearly cap. Yeah. And it goes okay. on your fiscal year. Yeah. Okay. Again, if you're looking to come into real estate and sell to friends and family, four, five, six transactions a year, um, this may not be an important question for you because you would never be able to reach that cap anyways, right? But if you're coming in and you really want to make a six-figure income, you want to build a real estate business, then this is a question that you would want to ask. Okay. We good, Terry? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Sorry. Perfect. All right. Okay. Um, and then the next, the fifth question is what, what is your, I think I've mistyped it. What is your biggest contribution to the real estate industry so far? Okay. How are they growing the industry? What are they doing to, to kind of blaze a trail again, that visionary, um, you know, how are they growing real estate? It's a, Real, real estate has taken a, an interesting turn in the fact that once Zillow and Open Door and, and all of those um, companies, what we call Wall Street companies came in, it kind of changed the industry, right? So how is your company committed to contributing to the real estate industry so far, right? They're going to be working on your behalf. Um, and so you want to know what, are, what is their plan, right? What is their biggest contribution? So the next thing um, that I just want to share with you guys is coaching versus mentoring. So one of the questions that I get asked, um, you know, um, when I'm interviewing with new or existing agents is um, what does it mean to have a coach? And what does it mean to have a mentor? Okay. So as a new agent, you're going to want one of these. All right. So I'm just going to say that this would be something that would be super important as a new agent because you're going to need more support. Okay. So, um, a, so a mentor, um, and I'll, I'll use my, my brandy terminology, um, is someone who has a very successful real estate business who has offered to assist you for a fee, okay? So they're gonna be sharing your, their expertise, answering questions that you have. Everything is gonna be very situational. Um, offering solutions, all right? They're gonna be um, you know, sharing their knowledge with you, all right? So they, they have a very successful real estate business and they are going to help you for a fee. Okay, when they can, um, you know, they're going to they're going to share their story with you, you know, tell answer any questions that you might have offer solutions. A coach. Right. So that's the other side of that is someone who does not have a competing real estate business. Whose number one goal is to help you reach your goal. OK, so a coach is someone who has had a very successful real estate business and who is using their knowledge to help you find your success. Coaches draw out knowledge that resides within the coachee, so they help you self-discover more of an empowering um, a relationship versus, hey, let me just tell you what to do, right? Um, they engage you in asking questions and they're going to help you de help develop strong problem solvers. So they're really going to be looking to pull out the, the inner strength in you to help you learn how to 
um, problem solve and, um, and get through issues that come up in your business, okay? So the difference is, is that a coach, their job, and of course, they're going to get a fee as well, right? So it's fee-based, just like mentorship, but a coach's number one job is to help you reach your goals. It's accountability. It's saying, hey, listen, you told me that you want to do 12 transactions this year. You're at eight. What are some things that we can work on to help you get to 12? right? They're going to hold you accountable to what you say you want to accomplish. A mentor is going to help you when you're in crisis or, or need, you know, something um, in the moment, but they're not there to continue to drive you forward. All right. Does that make sense? Yes. Again, no right, no wrong. It's really going to be based on what you're looking for. Okay. At Keller Williams, we lean more to the coaching side. We also offer mentorship. Um, our mentorship is non-fee-based. Our coaching is fee-based. Our mentorship is culture-based, meaning that our culture here is that our agents help our agents because that's the right thing to do, okay? Um, but as you're interviewing brokerages, you're going to want to know, do you offer a coaching program or do you have a mentorship program, okay? Um, and so, you know, these are things that, um, that, that will be important to you as a new agent, you know, who's going to be there to, again, to help move me forward in my business, not just help me through crisis moments, okay? Okay, that makes sense. So the last slide that we'll talk about, um, and I just want to, you know, this is where a lot of people really get stuck. So I wanted to just spend a minute on this. A lot of, a lot of agents get stuck in how much is it going to cost me to partner with you? Okay. And while expense is important, you also want to think about um, potential. Okay. So expense is going to be your cost of sale. Cost of sale is going to include your transaction fees, meaning that a transaction fee is when I close a deal, how much do I owe my brokerage, okay? Because when you close a deal, you earn a commission. Of that commission, you will have to split it with your brokerage, okay? So how much do you have to pay in company dollar? Is there a royalty? Are you paying for coaching and mentoring, okay? What are your transaction fees? The other thing you want to know is what is your monthly fee, okay? Every brokerage pretty much is going to have a monthly agent invoice. What is that? And what does that include? Okay, some of the languaging are going to be, oh, we have a desk fee or we have an agent fee. I would encourage you to steer away from brokerages that are going to charge you to be an agent with them, okay? Um, they should not be making money off of you hanging your license there, okay? Um, they should be committed to your success, and that's how they make their income, is by helping you succeed. So a monthly agent invoice, it can be as, as cheap as 20 bucks a month, and I've heard all the way up to $450 a month, okay? So you want to know, what is that fee, and what does that include? Now at Keller Williams, it includes their ins your E&O insurance, your MLS dues, your technology. Um, it includes, you know, on-call support. Ours runs $72.50. So if that gives you just a, a middle of the road, um, I say we probably are on the cheaper end, but we don't charge you to be an agent here. What we do is we take care of your financial, legal, and management responsibilities for you, and then you just pay us for that, okay? But that's a question you're going to want to ask. What is your monthly fee, and what does it include? And then the third cost of sale that you're going to want to know is um, what are your annual fees? So here at Keller Williams, we do require that you join a board of realtors, so there's a difference between a real estate agent and a realtor. Um, there is an, it is an annual fee that you have to pay a board, right? You don't pay your brokerage, you have to pay a board. Um, but you want to know, is that something they require? Do they require you to join a board? My personal preference is, is that you want to be on a board. And you want to deal with agents who are on a board. It's a higher code of ethics. It's where all your forms are housed. The board lobbies for you on behalf of the, of the real estate industry. You want to be a part of that, in my opinion. Um, but it is something that you want to ask. Do you require 
me to join a board? And if so, what boards can I join? At our office, we're a member of eight boards, so you can join any board around us, but you're gonna wanna ask that question, okay? <clears throat> when we focus on the net side of this, this is the question you need to ask yourself, right? So you, once you're aware of your expenses, your cost of sale expenses, here's the question you have to ask about net, right? So net is how much money you get to take home to your family. And that's the most important number, all right? So net is how much, how much money it will take to change my family's life, all right? And so I, I always say, instead of focusing on expense, I like to focus on net. And so the question you wanna ask yourself as you're going through these brokerages is, given the resources provided by that brokerage, can your income be greater than it would be without those resources, right? So let me, I'll deep dive. I see a little a perplexed look. So what that means is, is that do they have the training and the vision and the coaching and the mentoring that is going to continue to move me forward? Or is it a, hey, hang your license here. Good luck. Let us know if you need anything. Okay. Exactly. So if they provide resources, continuing education, if they're providing technology, if they're providing um, coaching and support, if you plugged into those resources, could you make more money than without those resources? Okay, so that's the question that you have to ask yourself. So it's not always just about how much is it gonna cost me to partner with that brokerage. It's more of given the, per the services and resources and models they provide, can I make the amount of money? Can I bring home the amount of money I want to bring home to my family if I plugged into those resources? Okay. And so, you know, that this is where a lot of agents get hung up is they're like, oh, that brokerage is so expensive. Oh, you know, this, that, and the other. And that is something to consider. But, you know, if, but you have to make sure that the, the values there, right, is the value that they're giving me based on the culture, training, technology, wealth building, does that offset what the expenses would be. Can I make more money? Can I sell more houses? Can I sell higher priced houses, right? Can I do more with the resources they're providing me than if I did not have those resources? And that's really the, the ending question that you have to ask yourself as you're making those final decisions is, you know, do they have what I'm looking for? Does it match my value of what's important to me? And given the resources provided by that brokerage, can I make the money that I would need to make to in, impact my family, okay? So those are all my slides. I wanted to kind of keep this short and sweet. Um, the follow-up or questions or something that you would like for me to cover? Because this is the first one of these I've done. So I'm kind of waiting. Oh, you did great. <laughs> you did great. <laughs> yeah, you've actually answered a lot of questions for me, so. Good, awesome. Okay, perfect. Um, and so I am going to get you, um, I, I, I know we're, I've sent you guys um, Facebook messages. So I'm going to send you this PowerPoint, okay, for you to be able to um, go back through it. Where are you guys located? Um, I'm in I'm Houston, here. Texas. Uh, oh, I'm Nicole, in, you're in Houston. Dallas, Texas, oh, y'all are both Texas girls. Okay. Hey, Texas. <laughs> Dallas and Houston. My in-laws lived in Mesquite um, for 25 awesome. years. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And my father-in-law was the vice president of the State Fair of Texas. Oh, that's cool. So I have a little Texas, little Texas background myself. Okay, so I will get all this to you. I will also include my cell phone number and my email. Okay. If I can be of any support to you guys as you're going through this process, I will give you my my honest opinion. My job is to help people self-discover what the best next step is for them, okay? I get paid to promote Keller Williams, but at the end of the day, if that's not the right decision, then I have to help you self-discover that, and that's okay, right? So that's, my, that's what I do, and so I want to help you guys as y'all move through the process, be able to figure out what the best next step is for you in partnering with the broker, okay? That's really good marketing for Keller Williams, too, because that makes me want to lean toward a brokerage that would give away this stuff, you know, to, to, you know, give us the autonomy to choose. 
Yeah, we're definitely coming from contribution. That's really our culture here is that we just pour into everyone and um, those that are attracted to what we have to offer, you know, we would love to partner with, but we're not very, we're not aggressive in that. We're just like, hey, let us just tell you what we know um, and then help you figure out what the best thing is for you. I think that's really cool. Brandy, the actual um, talking portion of this presentation, are we able to, I would love for my husband to actually like just yeah. watch this. Absolutely. Um, I will upload okay? it to YouTube um, and send you the link. Great. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. Okay. And share it with your friends. If there's anyone that you know in study group or whatever, and I'll do more of these. And now that I know you guys are interested, um, I don't mind doing them. I actually even thought about doing a, another one called to team or not to team, um, because that's another big question. Like, should I join a team or should I be an independent bro uh, agent? I'm not really sure. So that would be kind of the next thing that I thought about is we could do it to team or not to team one, just to help you understand what that actually means. No, that would be great. I have a, um, a friend who catapulted me into this and her reasoning was she wanted me to join a team okay. with her but I just don't know what that looks like yet absolutely so. yeah absolutely so and again knowledge is power so understanding helps you really kind of make the next best step okay cool. awesome all right Terry I'll get all the and Nicole I'll get all this over to you I'll include my personal contact information reach out if I can be as any assistance Randy thank okay. you so much you're welcome y'all have a great afternoon bye, bye Terry bye